one of the things that I wanted to do was do a video on how to use the industrial sewing machine. Um, there's a lot of people that have made videos on thread in the machine and uh, how the machine works. But what I want to do is show you how to use this machine to where you are not afraid of it, you are not intimidated by it, you understand when to uh, adjust your, your tension and why you are adjusting your tension, how to thread the machine, uh, and what you can do and what you cannot do to, to this machine. You know, you, you really cannot break this machine, but you can throw it out of time. So I will explain that to you, uh, but the main thing I want to show you is how to get on this machine and master this machine. It's, it's not difficult, and it's only a machine. That's all it is, it's a machine. You control it, it does not control you. So I'm going to show you what I do and how I do it. Everyone else have their ways of, of, uh, of sewing and how they use the machine, but I'm going to show you how I accomplish um, what I'm able to accomplish with this machine, okay? Okay, now what I'm going to do is show you how to thread the machine. Now, we have nine steps on this machine. Some machines might have maybe 10 or 11, uh, but I will show you how to thread this machine, and I will also show you how to thread one of our other machines that have a different configuration up here but once you can thread one machine you can thread any machine um, and once you see how the machine is threaded well then a lot of time you can figure out how to thread any other machine that you see but some machines have more steps than than others I'm going to show you this one and I'm going to show you another one which are the two common types of uh, machines that you will see. So this one have nine steps. They have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's switching this little arm right here. Six, seven, eight, nine is the last step, which is the uh, the eye of the needle. Now. A lot of times when people see someone threading a machine, first thing they think is, gosh, I would never remember how to do that. Well, look at it this way. It's only nine steps. Now, if it was 90 steps or 900 steps, now that's a lot of steps. But nine steps, if you look at it from that perspective, it's really not a lot. I mean, it's, it's, I mean that's nothing. If you compare 9 to 900 or 9 to 90. So, right up in here, most machines are a little different, but the, the purpose is pretty much the same. So, this one have a pin that sticks up and it have two holes. Now, I am only going to use one hole. Some people will use both of them, and I'll tell you why I only use one. I only use one because it allows my thread to stay free. I don't like using the second one because that puts more tension on my thread as it's threaded and I start to sew. So that could tighten my, my stitch, that could keep my stitch tight. So I choose to use only one of the two holes. Like I say, some people will use both of them. Now, this is number one, number two. This one has three holes. So, what I'm going to do now, some people thread it different, but I'm showing you how I do it. I'm going to go from right to left, from left to right, 
from right to left. Now that's the way I do it. Now some people will so I mean some people will thread it to where they go right to left and they go around this this pen. And then they will go around again. Again, I don't do that because as as the machine starts to sew, by wrapping it around like that, for me, and it could be just psychological, is that it puts more tension on my thread. So I choose not to do it that way. You can if you wish, but I choose not to. So I'm going to go back to my right, from right to left. This is your tension. And when we start sewing, I'm going to show you when to adjust the tension left, when to adjust the right, and why you're doing that. Now, when you go through the tension, you want to pull your thread just like you're flossing your teeth. You pull. You want it to be tight. Now, this is where a lot of people get confused and start to doubt themselves. It's right in here. Now, one of the things that you want to do is that you want to make sure that you're going between these two plates when you thread this. Now, this right now the plate is tight. If I raise this foot, th this plate, it opens up. When I let the foot down, this plate closes it. And that's what keeps the tension on your thread and that's why you really need the walking foot when you when you're sewing something that's that's thick now this can't go too thick if it go too thick the foot will be up too high and it would allow this these two plates to be open so when it's sewing your thread will, 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 will get all batched up and I'll show you what it looks like now the other thing is that when you're when you're threading around this tension, a lot of time people will make the mistake and put their thread behind those two plates. They will go behind it. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do that. Even though that when you're sewing on the top side, it will look so good, and then you finish and you look on the bottom of your of your product and you will see what will happen if you put your thread behind the tension instead of going in between okay so this is number one number two number three is the tension you pull it tight now see the spring here one of the things you want to do you want to come around the tension and back over that spring so when you pull the thread that spring is bouncing if you pull the thread and that spring is not bouncing it is not threaded correctly what I show people one of the ways to uh, when you first start to remember to do that is that you take the thread once you once you pull it through the tension and you pull it tight you bring the thread around and let it touch the other side of the thread. If you let it touch, you, you came far enough and then come over that spring. Now this is number one, number two, number three, and this is number four, which is this little hook here. So you want to go under. You want to go under this little hook here. So when you pull, that spring is moving. So this is one, two, three, four, Number five, just pull it through, and you want to have you more thread, so you just raise the foot, and that opens up the, the tension, and you can pull it very easily. Then let the foot back down. This is one, two, three, four, five, and six is through this eye. 
I'm going to go through this eye. That's number six. You see how when I pull it, that spring is moving. This is number seven. This eye here is number eight. And your machine could have a little a little hook pin down here. They all are, are kind of, they look different, but they pretty much have the same setup as far as the way it's threaded. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight through this eye, and nine is through this needle. Now, you always want to go from left to right, from left to right. If you do not do that, if you do not do that, you may get lucky sometime and it, and, and it sews correctly, but most of the time it will not. Now why, I don't know. I just It's just a science of it. Whoever that designed these machines, they designed it that that is the science of it, is that you have to go from left to right. I'm not sure if it's because the bobbin is, is over on the left side, but you have to go from left to right. Now, there are people out there that know about machines. They could tell you exactly why you have to do that. But I know when you do that, it works. Now, one thing I want to say is that a lot of times when people are going from number one to number two, and have these three holes, they would think it's one, two, three, four. So they would count these three holes as individuals. But this is this is only one. It's not three counts here. This is only one count. Now, okay, now what I want to do, I want to show you about the other machine that I was telling. This is a Singer uh, 211A as an Apple. 967KB K as in Kathy B as in boy um, this is this machine is from the 1960s they still sell this machine it still looks the same and the price for a used one is pretty close to the price for a new one and I think I saw them online for maybe around uh, 1500 or 1600 um, but I purchased this one for $900 but they they normally run more than that as a used machine uh, this one here it threads different and I'll show you the different and, and this is what I was talking about right in here is where uh, the, the two machines threads different. The other machine only had just that one piece right here. It did not have all of this. And this this is it, I don't even know why it's here, but uh, I guess it's just the science of it. But on the other machine it had a, a post that that, uh, that was upright. This post here lays down um, horizontal but you can't turn it to where it's is uh, vertical but we use it to where it's horizontal and just to kind of show you how we thread this machine let me put this thread through this eye we're going to go through this eye here and then to the left there's another eye will come through here the other machine had this piece here but it was three it had three uh, eyes in it to where we had to loop from left from right to left left to right right to left this one here we're going to loop from left to right now I'm just showing you how I thread this machine someone else may thread it different from left to right some machines will have this piece here on top and basically what I'm going to do I'm just going to go over that and I'm going to go under this post here now the difference between this machine and the other one this one threads like an S so I'm going to this is the tension 
So I'm just going to pull it through and I pull it tight, just like you flossing. And then you're going to come through these two plates and you just pull up and I'll take it through through here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll go through this eye, which is eight, and I will go back through the same slot that I went in, which was seven. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and seven even uh, can be used as nine. This is ten. This is eleven. Twelve is right here. And thirteen is through the needle. It's from left to right. So you have 13 steps to thread this machine. And like I say, this is where the different come in. It's right here. And really, I, like I said, I'm not sure what purpose these here serve. And then, like I said, 13 is through the needles. And that is from left to right. <laughs> now, while I'm on this machine, the other thing I want to show you is that this one here, the bobbin goes, it drops in. It drops in here. So I'm going to take it out just so you can see how it drops in. And what I do is that I put the bobbin in counterclockwise. I put it in counterclockwise. And there's a slot. There's a slot right here. Right in this little area here. And I just pull the thread. I pull the thread through that slot. And then when you when you turn the wheel, there's a hook that'll go around and grab the thread, so it pulls it up. It pulls the bobbin thread up. Okay, so we will go back to the other machine, and we will start to um, look at our next step. One of the things that I always say is that. When you first start doing this, you're doing it conscious. And when you're doing it conscious, you, you're thinking about it. Which, which direction you, you need to go next. If you thread that machine 10 times, then you would start to do it subconscious. And what I try to get people to understand is that most of the things that we do in life we're doing it subconscious. When we do it for the first time, we're doing it from a conscious point of view because we're thinking about it. It's like if you get in your car and you're going to go somewhere and you say, oh, I'm going over so-and-so house. You don't start thinking about which way you're going to go and, and, and how you're going to get there unless, unless you hear that there's a traffic jam, the normal way that you would normally go, and so you decide, you know what, I need to go this direction and so now you're you're doing conscious but subconscious you just say I'm going somewhere you get in your car you you start up your car and you just go you don't even think about it you just go but that's because you're doing it subconscious so it's the same thing with threading the machine you are doing it if you if you thread it ten times you will start to do it subconscious to where you just sat down at the machine and you just thread it. You just, you just do it. We have people that that normally sew on a regular sewing machine and I put them on an industrial sewing machine. They panic and they, they can't understand how to thread it. But 
It's the same thing when they get on their their home machine. They they don't think about it. They just get on there and they just thread it because they're doing it subconscious. So just keep that in mind is that if you thread it ten times, ten times, you have entered that information into your brain to where it's there. It is there. And now you might doubt yourself, but that information is there. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to do your bobbin. How to uh, put the bobbin in, how I uh, refill the bobbin. And then once we do that, well then I will show you how to control this machine. Because once you can thread it, refill your bobbin, control this machine, you know what? That's pretty much it. I mean, that is that is it. That's like when you get in your car. When you get in your car, you control your car. So I, I'm going to show you how to do that. That would be our next step. Okay, now that we have the machine uh, threaded, I'm going to show you how to how to thread your bobbin. Uh, so what I do now, like I said, other people may do it differently, but I'm, going to, I'm just showing the way I do things. One thing that I do is that I will unthread the machine from this point here, and I would take the bobbin, and I'll put the thread in from inside of the bobbin to the outside. So I'm putting it from the inside to the outside. Now, some of your bobbins uh, will have holes on both sides like this. Some of them will have holes just on one side. And some of them, uh, let's see if I have one. I have seen those that just have one hole on one side and one hole on the other side. But normally you're going to have holes on both sides or holes just on one side. Okay, so what I would do, I would take a empty bobbin. I would take my thread and I would put the thread in from the inside of the bobbin to the outside of the bobbin. And then I will hold that thread from the outside and I would get it started. And once I get it started enough, and what I want to do is keep tension on the thread so the thread does not start to unroll from the bobbin. I will take the bobbin and I will turn it to where the thread is coming from under over the top towards me. Because if, if I do it where the thread is coming from over the top to under towards me, when I put it on this post here, well, what will happen is that it will unroll. So in order for me to roll the, to fill the bobbin, I'll put it where the thread is coming over the top towards me. I make sure that the foot is up. I turn the machine on. I push this lever forward. And then I'll just start to fill the bottom. Now I can stop this when I want to stop it or it will stop by itself once it fills. And I'll show you what happens when, that, when it does that. And like I say, this is the way that I feel mine. Other people have their own way. It just kicks back take the bobbin off. I'm still keeping pressure, not, I'm not pressure, but tension on the thread. I cut it. Now I will put it inside the bobbin casing. Now some people put theirs in differently, but I'm just showing you the way I do mine. I will put the, the bobbin in to where the thread is coming over the top towards me. I drop it inside, 
this bobbin casing have a little split here so what I do I just bring the thread around bring it through that that split and this spring here I just lay the thread right up against that spring but I also the other thing that I want to do is that I'm, what I'm doing is keeping pressure on the bobbin so it doesn't turn when I pull it so what I do I pull it until it fits it fits right in, inside this little slot here and then what I will do I will pull it to make sure there's no resistance if there's resistance I'll take it back out and check it again okay now that I have the bobbin filled the next thing I will do I will put it on this there's well first what I will do is that I want to show you this. Now see how when I pull that in this, this thread, it comes off of the, uh, the spool. So I want to make sure that when I place this, on that post, well then there's no thread that's hanging over. So this is what I do. I will, this pin here, there's a pin here on the bobbin housing. I make sure that this pin is facing me because what ha what have to happen is that that needle, it goes down and it pulls this bobbin thread up. So which means that this space here, this space needs to be facing up. It needs to be facing up. So, so that needle is allowed to go down and pull that thread up. Now. If this pin is facing down, the needle will go down, it would hit this casing. If it's facing to the back, it will go down and hit this casing. If it's facing upward, it will go down and it will hit this casing. You could break your needle or you could damage your bobbin housing. So the way I make sure that I have it in the right position, I make sure that this pin it's facing me so I take my thumb I put it underneath this pin and I put it on this this uh, post that's underneath which this hole here this hole goes onto that post and what I will do, I will pull the thread to make sure that it's locked on. And if I feel any resistance, I pull the casing back off and see what's, what's happening with the uh, bobbin. Now, most people, once they put it on, they don't want to pull it. This is the time to pull it because if you want it to come off, this is the time to do it. Because if you do not, and if it comes off, and when you turn your wheel there's a piece here that moves forward and it can move it can move forward to where it, it closes in that bobbin housing and if it's if the bobbin is not setting inside of the bobbin housing correctly what can happen is that it can pretty much get stuck on there and most people will panic at, at that point but whatever you do don't panic because you will force the machine because you're trying to uh, release that bobbin housing. You just have to take your time and think your way through it. Just take your time, think your way through it, and you will be able to take it off, well, take it out without damaging your machine. That's, how, that's another way how you can throw it out of, out of time. When that happens, then you start to force it. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is that I'm going to show you, I'm going to go ahead and rethread this. And I'm going to show you, well, let me show you this. Because the thread is, the bobbin thread is underneath, now we need to pull the bobbin thread up so it comes through this hole. So what I do is that I re-thread the machine. just go back through my same process now remember if you do this ten times 
After that, like I said before, you're doing it subconscious. Now, another thing is that a lot of people, they, they, they try to look for that needle eye, and I don't do that because I'm straining my eyes to try to see that small needle. So what I do, I know that the needle eye is right in here. So I just basically take the thread and I just fish and find it. One other thing I want to tell you is that when you thread your thread through the needle eye, when you pull it, if you hold the thread, it will guide it to where it, it does not get wrapped around the needle. And that's what you don't want it to do. So now what I will do, I will hold the top thread. I will turn the wheel until the needle comes back up. And what happened is that that's the bobbin thread right there. See how it pops up? Now I'll just take my little snips, pull both threads. through that hole, now I can put this plate back on. You always want to start with your thread pushed to the back. If it's like here and you start, it can get tangled up when you first start sewing. So always start with your thread pushed to the back. Now we're getting to the good Okay, earlier when I was talking to you about threading the machine and I was talking about if you do not put the thread through the tension plates and pull it, what can happen? Now, I'm going to give you an example of what can take place. Now, if I'm threading this machine and I accidentally and thread the machine to where the thread is behind the tension, and I go around the spring as if uh, I'm threading it the correct way. I'm going to show you the results that you will get. And once you see this, you will know exactly what the problem is. And this have happened to me a couple of times. And I guarantee once it happened to you, you will know exactly what the problem is when you see this. I'm going to stitch it and this is why you always want to look at your stitch from the front and back after you stitch maybe about six stitches. I'm going to stitch this. Now the top stitch looks good but when you turn it over this is the results that you get. So that's why it's always good to look at your bottom stitch and not just your top stitch because what can happen is that you can sew up your complete product and you turn it over and that's what you would have. You would have these threads sticking up like this. So I just want to show you that uh, because you will run into this this problem and, and this way you know exactly what to do to solve it. Now we'll move on to the next step. I stitch. I get uh, questions about why do I turn the wheel and not use the motor, well the uh, foot pedal. Well when, I, when I'm turning the wheel what that does, that gives me control over the machine. It's to me this is like my speed armature. This is how I control the speed. The foot pedal, I use that, it's sort of like, uh, the metaphor that I, I try to use to think to myself is that it's sort of like if, if I'm driving my car and I come to a point where there's a speed bump, I don't just drive over the speed bump. I, I come up to the speed bump and then I, accelerate just a little, just enough to bring me over, over that speed bump. So I use the, the, the foot pedal in that way when I'm sewing because normally what I'm doing is that 
put here. Long what I'm doing is that I'm this is how I'm sewing. Okay, normally this is the way I'm sewing. So this gives me control. So when I get ready to turn a corner, I can stop, leave the needle down, pivot, and sew. Because what happened is that, what you have to understand is that this leather will not move as fast as the machine will sew when uh, when you just mash the foot pedal. And plus, when you just mash the foot pedal, if I just mash it, it's going to give me how many stitches that it, it want to give me until it stops or until I take my foot off the foot pedal. Now, if I want three stitches, I could go one, two, Three. That's my three stitches. Now, I do use the, the foot pedal to release the clutch. Whether it's a it's a clutch motor or a servo motor, I still use the foot pedal to release it. See, if I try to turn it now, it's stiff. Now my foot is not on the foot pedal. But if I put my foot on the foot pedal and just mash down just enough, and if you mash down just enough I can release the clutch see how I can just turn it now but if I take my foot off the foot pedal now I have to kind of force it well not force it but push a little harder to turn now what I do is that I look for that place on the foot pedal where the motor it want to go, but I'm, I'm keeping it from going. And if you look at my hand, when I put my foot on the foot pedal, I can release the clutch. Now the clutch is released. Now if I mash down just a little more, you will see my hand kind of jump. See, see how it moves? Right there, right there is where the machine is saying, okay, I'm ready to go. If you push me any further, I'm going to take off, so that's where you want to be, where it's just right there, you can control that. If I take my hand off, and I just kind of turn it, see how it's going to turn? Because I'm just like right there, but that's where I want it, to where I can control that. If I need it to help me, it's there. Okay? Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is how I turn corners. Now, the other thing, well, I, I'll get to the, the, the length of the stitch, but I'm going to show you how I turn corners. Okay, just to kind of give you an idea of what I would normally do, for example, I'm going to take this part of the foot right here, and I'm going to line it up to where the, the center of this foot is right on top of this line here. That is my focus point. I don't look at the needle. I don't look at this part of the foot. I don't look at this part of the foot. All I'm looking at is this foot right here is setting right on top of this, this stick. Basically, what I will do, I will just walk it. Now, when I get to here, and when I make this turn, I am, see it from this point, I am short, just, I mean, just a little I am short so what I will do I will do a a half stitch and I'll show you how to do a half stitch okay now this this is this is my half stitch I am when I turn 
here I'm off just a little bit so to do a half stitch I'm going to do like a full stitch and I will not let the let the needle go all the way down I only let it go down to where it's right at this eye here So this is what I do, is that I just walk the machine. I'm using the motor just enough to allow me to just kind of pull, well, just kind of turn the wheel without the wheel uh, being out of control. This allows me to control the wheel. Once you learn how to thread this machine, how to maintain the machine, and how to use the machine, you can do anything with it because now it just becomes a tool. You have learned how to control it. You are not allowed it you, you are not allowing this machine to control you. You do have to understand that this machine uh, whatever machine that you have, it does have limits. Long as you stay within your limits, you can do anything with your machine that you want to do. Don't let someone tell you that you need years and years of experience in order to sew and be good at it. That is not true. You can learn how to use a machine and understanding that as long as you control that machine and not allow it to control you, you could have been sewing for a month and do just as beautiful work than someone that's been sewing for 20 years. So it, it really have nothing to do with how long you've been sewing. It's really understanding the tool that you're using. This is just a tool. That's it. And as long as you look at it that way and understand that you control the tool and the tool does not control you, you will do beautiful work. The next thing I want to do is talk to you about maintaining your sewing machine. One of the things you want to do is that you want to make sure that your sewing machine stays oil. Uh, you can get your oil from your local sewing machine uh, supplier or you can probably even go to your local hardware store and purchase uh, some oil. Make sure that it's, it's clear. I'm quite sure that they buy this by the gallon or five gallon and they just fill up these small containers and sell it. I'm quite sure you can find something uh, that will work with your machine. I'm not sure, but I would think you can get something like some three in one oil. I haven't seen any in years, but it's, you know, it's just a salt machine. So I don't think there's anything special about it. I mean, I wouldn't put in the motor oil on it, but uh, basically what you're doing, you are just lubricating the moving parts. And your sewing machine will have different little openings that are, that is where you can just put the oil. Some, some machines are self-oil. They have, when it raises up, they have a, a, a tray underneath, and this is where you will load up the oil. Some machines you will are several different places. For example, if I wanted to all this machine, this is a moving part, so I will put a couple of drops in here. So anywhere there's moving parts or anywhere there's openings, there's holes, I will put all inside of there because it will just drain down into the moving part. If you do that, your machine will last for years. And like I said before, the only thing you can do to these machines is throw them out of time. You cannot break these machines. So you can break a needle, but you cannot break the machine. So I hope this video was some help to you. Some of you already understand about mastering the uh, industrial sewing machine but for those of you that are new to this this video is special for you and I hope this was some help to you 
And the next thing I want to share with you, and that is share with someone else. I know a lot of times we don't want to show anyone what we do or how we do it. But you know what? If you share with someone else, you will be blessed and you will, you will receive more by sharing. So again, thank you for watching and I have more videos on the way.